Hello, hello, COP. Are you ready for church? Well, welcome to our online service. This is, we have gathered together. We're going to have church together, but we're going to do it online again today. As always with our online services, we start reading Psalm 91. So let's read it. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. You know, when you go to church, you want to hear good news. And that is nothing but good news for us today. We're going to worship the Lord together in just a moment. But first, let's look at Psalm 109, verse 30, 30. It says, With my mouth I will greatly extol, or the ESV says, give thanks to the Lord, I will greatly extol the Lord. In the great throng, I will praise him. Verse 31, for, God always gives us a for, for he stands at the right hand of the needy one. You know, as we go through ECQ, as we go through these journeys, these adventures together, Many of us find ourselves standing in a place of need. We find ourselves standing at a time of need. And look what it said. I will greatly extol the Lord, for he stands at the right hand of the needy one. So are you needy today? Is there something you need from God? You need direction. You need relief. You need finances. You need health. You need comfort. He stands at the right hand of the needy one. That means he is standing at your right hand right now. And if God is by your side, what do you have to fear? If God is by your side, what more do you need in life than God by your side? Now, it says, with my mouth, okay, we're going to sing, we're going to worship the Lord, and we're going to use our mouths to do it. I will greatly extol the Lord. And in the ESV, I will greatly give thanks. That's the word. Again, the word is yada for that give thanks or extol. That's the word yada. We know what yada is. COP, if I will ask you, show me yada. What will you do? You will immediately do this, right? Because yada is literally the extension of hands. It's lifting up our hands to the Lord. It's literally the extension of hands. It's what the word means. But that word that came right before it, I will greatly thank or I will greatly extol. It is a word that means very. All right, so if we will 
Yada, the Lord, you know, one of the very, very good example of that is the, the one leper. There were 10 who were cleansed, but the one leper came back crying out to the Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. You healed me, you healed me. And this one leper is the one that got fully made whole, right? We remember that story. He exerted effort in giving thanks to the Lord. He made known the praises of God and yada, we're making known God's praises with our uplifted hands, but it says we will very yada. We will greatly give thanks. So show me again, what does yada look like? Let's all do it. This is what yada looks like. Well then what is very yada? You know, probably if you have children right there in your midst right now, your children can demonstrate for you what does greatly, what does very yada look like? You might be jumping up and down while you're lifting up your hands. You might be throwing yourself into it in every, every, every way. So as we worship the Lord, we are just about to do that. Let's all gather ourselves together Let's stand up and let us remember, number one, that he stands at the right hand of the needy one. And number two, let's remember to very yada, not just yada, but very yada. With our mouth, we give thanks to the Lord for he stands at the right hand of the needy one. What a beautiful reason. That makes you want a very yada, doesn't it? It just does because he's right there. He's with you. He's for you. He's blessing you today. So receive that blessing from the Lord as we worship him together. Let's worship the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Restore
For our offering thought this weekend, I want to begin to teach you about the prayer of Jabez. I don't think I've ever talked to you about this in over 40 years. It's just two little verses in the Bible that are powerful. Now, when we get out of lockdown, we'll get back into our retainable and promotable. Right now, we're running shorter services. So I want to walk you through the prayer of Jabez just a little bit at a time. First Chronicles chapter 4, beginning with verse 9, English Standard Version. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. What a powerful prayer. Let me read it through the New Living. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his request. What a prayer to pray. Now, we're going to start breaking down the prayer next week, Lord willing. But right now, I want you to start with a man that didn't live by his labels, but instead he was a man who knew how to pray. Now, I want you to notice this was a man all his life who was called Jabez. Jabez literally means the one who brings pain. Every time somebody called his name, they were saying, the one who brings pain, the one who brings pain, the one who brings pain because his name had a definition. My name, David, means beloved of God, but his name meant the one who brings pain. Now, can you imagine all of your life having that label, that everybody who spoke to you kind of smiled when they said, you're the one who brings pain. Who wants to be his friend? Who wants to have a relationship with the one who brings pain? Now, think of all the people in the Bible that you know that had labels put on them, even our Savior. He was called a man possessed by devils. He was called a bastard, and it's illegitimate, but it's the bad word for illegitimate, a bastard son. I mean, you think of all the people in the Bible, and you think of all the great people that you and I have known through life. The people tried to put labels on. People wanted to define us. People think that if they say it enough, it'll stick to us. But you know what? Labels don't stick to men and women of God. And you are a child of God. Now, I want you to notice what overcomes labels. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. The Hebrew word for honorable there means gravitas. That's a great word, gravitas. It means a weight, a significance of importance. Jabez lived a life of accomplishment. Jabez lived a life of significance far more than any of his brothers who had no doubt made fun of him all of his life with his label. You see, brothers and sisters, you can bear fruit and nobody will remember the label. They will only remember your gravitas. I like that word, gravitas. They will only remember your gravitas, your weight, your significance, your importance, what you have accomplished in life. Now, I don't know what labels people have put on you. I don't know what labels your family or your brothers and sisters have put upon you. I don't know what labels other people have put upon you. But the way to to deal with that is to ignore the label and live a life of gravitas, live a life of accomplishment and significance. And you know what? Nobody's gonna remember what Jabez means. Have you noticed even today we have to go and look up what it means? All we remember is his life of significance. So beloved, don't worry about the labels people try to stick to you. And sometimes they shout it and shout it and shout it and shout it, hoping if they say it enough times, it'll stick. Sometimes they throw a bunch of different things at you, hoping one of them will stick, like throwing spit wads at a wall when you were a little child in school. But you just live a life of gravitas. You just live a life of significant accomplishment. And people will remember you for what you did not for what people said about you.
the heart. That's my offering thought tonight. Let's open up our hearts and spend some more time in worship. Now, some of you are texting me again. Please remember what we learned in the previous lockdowns. You don't need to send your money online. This is not a Morocco bill to pay. You bring your tithe and you bring your seed when you come to the house of God. So when we, we get services going again, or you come to, to Fortress 91 or whatever, you come to a drive-in services, or you, you just hold it until we get back in services again. And then you, you bring your tithe and you bring your seed as an act of honor and worship to God. Amen? All right, let's open up our hearts and spend some time in worship.
week at COP, we praised God with COP Hawaii as they held their Love Out Loud outreach and 21 Kababayans were saved. One of them already attended the live worship service the very next day. This week at COP, our mighty men in uniform prove every day that the gospel is not chained. This week, they won 355 policemen to the Lord through their outreach in Pampanga. Go groups are opening from this effort. This week at COP, we're praising God for the 30 policemen who were water baptized through the MMU ministry. This week at COP, we rejoice with Police Corporal Kubaku as he dedicated his motorcycle to the Lord. This week at COP, we are thrilled with the opening of our COP Kawit campus and so blessed by the members who were able to drop by for prayer this week. If you live in the area of Kawit, please feel free to contact Pastor Joey Pagadora, who is our Kawit campus pastor. This week at COP, a big, big thank you to you, our incredible COP members, for all you are doing for one another during this quarantine period. We have seen so many examples of generosity and care as groceries and other supplies are being given to needy families. God bless you, COP. Did you know you are wonderful? During this time, please know you're part of a great family and our pastors are here to help. Please call your district or ministry pastor any time of day and night. We're happily there for you. And for the latest announcements and updates, always stay tuned to Pastor Sumrall's morning devotions and nightly evening online services. It has been another great week at COP. As we turn our attention now to the Word, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Psalms, and we're going to get there in just a few minutes. Remember with me that these are difficult days. These are days that Jesus said the cares of life bring despair, discouragement, disillusionment to the hearts of men. These are days in which the cares of life, Jesus teaches us, choke out the word. That means it chokes out faith and it chokes out truth. These are not days that we abandon the great truths that we have learned of healing. We fight the good fight of faith. These are not days that we abandon the great truths of God's provision in our life. These are days that we fight the good fight of faith. See, when you don't use the truth, you lose it. And these are not days to give up these truths. These are days to live these truths, not allow the word of God to be choked out of our life. We, we fight, as Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, we, we fight the good fight of faith. These are also days that the Christian cynics become very active. Paul had to face these guys in what was then called the province of Asia, especially in Colossae. Paul refers to these guys in some of his writings as the dogs because that was the name that they were given in the Greek world at that time. He refers to these people who practice asceticism twice in Colossians. See, as the days turn from revival to difficult days in that one generation, and we see the fruit of it in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3. As, as the season began to change, Paul saw these Christian cynics. They, they'd taken the philosophy of cynicism, which was anti-prosperity, anti anti-faith in God, and began to bring some of those doctrines into the Christian world. Now, just like we are focusing on truths of God's provision, in a season like this. There are, are doctrines of demons that are focused in different seasons of time. And one of those seasons is this day that we're living in right now. Doctrines of despair, doctrines of demons, doctrines of despair, doctrines of anti-healing, doctrines of God doesn't answer prayer, Doctrines of God will not provide, that you have to make it on your own. This Christian cynicism is, is entering into the church again. Now, beloved, Paul had to stand against that. Now, we saw one of their great doctrines of Christian cynics was anti-God's provision, anti-God's prosperity. But 1 Timothy 6, verse 17, Paul said, you know, yes, we, we, we tell the rich of this world not to be arrogant, but also remember God richly provides us with everything to enjoy. We, 
we, we don't all of a sudden think that God is a mean taskmaster who wants to take away everything we have. God is the God who provides. So we went through all of this of God's provision. But we said the second great truth of these Christian cynics, and I would call it the second great falsehood, was that they believed in self-sufficiency, that you're on your own. And they took it to such an extreme that they did not depend on anybody else. They didn't believe in working for anybody else. They didn't believe that God would provide and that nobody would help them. They believed that everything in life was selfish and you were on your own. God helps those that help themselves. But last week we learned you're not on your own, God sees. Last week we learned you're not on your own, God knows. Last week we learned you're not on your own. God is with you and he has promised to never leave you, to never fail you, and to never forsake you. But I wanna take it a step farther now. And it's gonna take me a few weeks to get through this and I preached myself happy this morning in the, in the drive-in service. It's such a beautiful truth. It is so wonderful to tell you about how wonderful God is. You are not alone. God will help you. Now you, you gotta get this on your inside. In the middle of this COVID-19 thing with all of its sickness and all of its fear and all of its financial chaos, you are not alone. God will help you. Now remember, we're different now that we're saved. Ephesians 2 verse 12, Paul said, remember that you too at one time, at one time in the past, before salvation, were separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, having no hope and without God in the world. Beloved, that's not who you are anymore. You are born again. You are in Christ and you are no longer without hope in this world. You have hope and you are no longer without God in this world. You have been brought near by the blood of of Jesus. So yeah, we, we think a little differently than the world in, in seasons like this. I can understand the despair. I can understand the discouragement of the world, but not us because we're not like the world. We are not without hope and we are not without God in this world. We are with hope and with God in this world. We have a God who helps us. This is a revelation that has to flow within your heart, that God is a God who comes to help you. Now think with me about Israel having to get this revelation. They were in a hard season. They were in slavery. and It was time for them to come into the promised land. It was time for the fulfillment of the promise made to Abraham. Exodus 3, beginning with verse 7. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. So I've seen and I've heard their cry because of their taskmaster, he hears. And I know their suffering, so we saw he knows. And I have come down to deliver them. Another translation says, I have come to help them. Now, when Jesus came, thousands of years later, the same revelation began to spread among the people of Israel. Luke chapter seven, beginning with verses 11 through 17. Jesus raises the dead son for the widow at the city of Nain. And in verse 16, New International Version translation, I love this, I preach this in all of our, our crusades in the provinces, it's my favorite province crusade sermon. They were all filled with awe and praise God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come, <laughs> God has come to help his people. That was what they said about Jesus. God has come to help his people. Now, beloved, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has come to help you. I know times are hard. I know there are financial challenges. I, I know the lockdowns. I, I know how difficult business is. I know how difficult transportation is. I know how difficult finances are. I know how difficult everything is. But beloved, God has come to help his people. You're not alone in this thing. God has come to help you. Oh, I love that. You're not alone in this financial challenge. You're not alone in this, this challenge right now. Some of you, especially in the early days of COVID-19, you were, you were isolated in a hospital room all by yourself. Nobody could get to you. You were having trouble breathing. You were all alone in the middle of the night, but you were never alone. 
Jesus was standing there with you and he came to help you. And one of those things we'll learn next week is he helps us by healing us. God has come to help his people. King David, you wonder why he was so successful in life? He had this revelation. Psalms 27, verse nine. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. Oh, you have been my help. Did you hear David? He said, God, you have been, past tense, all of my life, God, you have been my help. Beloved, all of your life, since the day you accepted Jesus as your Savior, he's been there as your help. Psalms chapter 40, verse 17, David said, as for me, I'm poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. <laughs> Did you hear that? The Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh God. Right now, your heavenly Father is thinking about you, and he is your help, and he is your deliverer. Right now, your heavenly Father knows those bills that have to be paid, knows that tuition fee that needs to be paid, knows that Morocco bill that needs to be paid, knows those challenges that you just lost your job. God is taking thought of you. God is mindful of you. God is thinking of you. And God is your help and your deliverer. Now, David had that revelation. It needs to flow within us also. The apostle Paul had this revelation. Acts 26, verse 22. He said, to this day, I, I have had the help that comes from God. So I stand to testify, both the small and great, say nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass. Listen to that. David said, you know, everything I accomplished in my life is because God helped me. Paul said, everything I have accomplished in my life is because I have had the help that comes from God. You think of all the churches that Paul birthed. You think of all the cities that were changed forever by the ministry of the Apostle Paul. He said, you know what? I'm not talking about this as my own ability. He said, I didn't do this in my own strength or my own ability or my own intelligence. He said, to this day, I've had the help that comes from God. Now, now beloved, sometimes, you know, sometimes they say hindsight is 2020, you know, and it's, it's easy to look backward, but sometimes looking backwards is really good to help you understand today and look forwards. I look back across our life as your pastor for over 40 years. To this day, I have had the help that comes from God. I can't look around and say, we built South Campus by our own intelligence and ability. We built Main Campus by our own intelligence and ability. We've got campuses in East and campuses in North. And now we're, we've got one in Cavite and another one starting in Cavite. And we've got these branch churches launching across the country and across. I can't sit here and look at you and say, you know what? It's because I'm so wonderful. I can look at you and I say, COP, to this day, we have had the help that comes from God. God has helped us. I look back at that economic chaos of the 80s. We should have never survived. <laughs> we should have never survived. I think of all the challenges that came against our church in the 60s and the 70s. We should have never survived. But to this day, we have had the help that comes from God. And you know what? He's not going to change now. In the middle of this COVID-19 thing, he's going to continue to help us. He's going to continue to help your family. Genesis chapter 21, beginning with verse 22, New Living Translation. About this time, Abimelech came with Fecal, his army commander, to visit Abraham. Now listen to what he said to Abraham. He said, God is obviously with you helping you in everything you do. <laughs> Abimelech said, you know what? I'm not going to mess with you, Abraham. God is obviously with you, helping you in everything you do. You know, I've had people walk up to me through the years as they saw us not only survive the 80s and the 90s, but finish the building and go debt free. I can remember the days when I thought, God, I don't know how we're going to survive. But we've lived through these days before. And we've had people walk up and say, God is obviously with you. You know what? That's what your family is going to say about you. As they watch the hand of God upon your business, 
If you'll just keep your faith in God as they watch the hand of God upon your business, as they watch the hand of God upon your career, as they watch the hand of God upon your family in the middle of this COVID-19 thing, people are going to recognize God is obviously with you. You're not alone in this thing. Uh Uh-uh. No way. You're not alone in this thing. God is obviously with you, helping you in everything you do. Oh, beloved, you're not alone. There's a God who helps you. But now we have to learn to talk about this some. 1 Samuel 7, verse 12. And Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mitzvah and Sheen and called his name Ebenezer. For he said, till now the Lord has helped us. Samuel said, you know, I'm going to build this memorial here. And I want all the people of Israel to come here and look at this. And I want you to remember as a nation, we are where we are because till now the Lord has helped us. There are little memorials you need to build in your home, in your office. If you walk into my office, you'll see the very top. Remember that little top section of, of Goliath's head? Remember Goliath? The last of the dead. I still have that on my bookshelf in my office. And people will walk in, and I have strange things in my office, okay? Things that are treasures to me. I have, I have little toys that when boys were little, like Jerwill, he said, Pastor, can I give this to you? And I still have that little toy. I have a little car that Pastor Pagadora's son gave me when he was a little boy. He's getting very tall now, like Pastor Pagadora. I still have it. There are precious things like that to me. But I have the crown of Goliath's head. People say, what is, what is this for? What is this? Why do you have that? I said, that reminds me that God helped us and the church is debt free. We have a little tombstone out next to gate one on General Luna. Have you ever looked at it? That's a memorial that you can remember. We are where we are because till now God has helped us. I have a little coconut shell in my office sitting right there on my shelf. I look at it every day. It's a little coconut shell bank to remind me that the very first offering we took to build main campus back in 1980, because we had no money in those days, very, very little offering came in bills. It was almost all coins to remind me this is where it all began. Till now, God has helped us. I tell you that to say this. Some of you need to build a little memorial, not a shrine, but a little thing of memory in your house. Maybe it will be the final check of where you paid off your house and lot. Maybe it will be a little certificate of something. And you look at it from time to time and you remember. And you tell the story to your children and to your grandchildren. Till now, God has helped us. We have what we have and we are where we are in life because God has helped us. David remembered it. Psalms 27, 9, O Lord, you have been, past tense, my help. Paul remembered it, Acts 26, 22. Again, to this day, I've had the help that comes from God. Psalms chapter 71, verse 24. And my tongue will talk of your righteous help all day long. I am so tired of hearing Christian testimonies about how wonderful you are and how smart you were and how you did this and you did this and you achieved that. I'm so weary with those testimonies. You know, the longer you live in life, the more you figure out you're not much of anything. (laughs) The more you figure out, I am what I am by the grace of God. I have what I have because God has helped me. And oh, beloved, if we'd begin to talk about this more in our families, to our friends, and not talk about how smart we were, what great ideas we had, and everybody follow my formula, but just talk about the fact I am where I am because I have had the help of God. I told you when we started, our text was going to be Psalms 121. And you know what? We finally got to our text. But this sermon is going to take me a few weeks to preach, all right? Psalms 121, verse 1. 
I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Did you hear that, beloved? Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Please, no disrespect, but your help does not come from the government with Ayuda. Your help doesn't come from your relatives overseas or family that works in the Middle East. Your help comes from the Lord. And he wants us to understand this. The creator of heaven and earth provides your help. The one who created and sustains everything we see says, I will send help. I will come and help you. Oh, beloved, please. You just need to get that in your heart. Say that with me. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Say it with me again. Whole family, say it with me. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Say it with me again. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Beloved, I know times are hard right now, but your help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. There is nothing too hard for him. Psalm 63, verse 7, for you have been my help. Psalms 115, verse 9 through 11. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Psalms 124, verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Beloved, <laughs> your help comes from the Lord. You need help with healing. Your help comes from the Lord. You need help with finances. Your help comes from the Lord. Young people, you need help with your studies. Your help comes from the Lord. Remember, he gave Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ability in all disciplines of learning. Go back and read Daniel chapter one. Your help comes from the Lord. He made them the top of their class. Their help came from the Lord. Whatever situation you're in, your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now look at his promises. Hebrews chapter two, verse 16. For it is surely not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. We'll say, well, pastor, I'm not a Jew. Galatians 3.29. Because we have chosen to walk in faith, we also, Galatians 3.29, we also are children of Abraham. God doesn't help the angels. They don't need any help. God helps us. The descendants of Abraham by faith. That's his promise. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 29. Happy are you, O Israel. <laughs> I like that. Happy are you, O Israel. Who is like you? a people saved by the Lord, the shield of your help. Now that's one of the titles of God. He's called the shield of your help. Now, if you've never been in trouble, you don't understand this. But when you're in financial trouble and God helps you, that's a shield. When you're sick in your body and God heals you, that's a shield. When you've got enemies attacking you and God helps you, that's a shield. The shield of your help. Psalms chapter 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Did you hear that? A very present help in trouble. Not somebody who's not going to show up. I was talking to Brother John the other day, and I felt so bad. I said, Brother John, I feel like I failed you. I should have been there when, when Sister Pat died. And I should have been there to help you. And I feel like I've let you down and I feel like I failed you, but we just can't travel. And if we, if I did, I didn't know, I, I don't know that I could get back in. And brother John said, David, you've done so much. And he was so gracious with me, but you know what? I wanted to help, but I couldn't be present. How many times have people looked at you and I in life 
and said, oh, if I would have been there, I would have helped you. But they weren't there. <laughs> God is a very present help in trouble. I love that. A very present, and not just present, a very present. Not just a little bit present, a very present help in trouble. Isaiah, Isaiah 41, verse 10, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Did you hear that? He said, don't be afraid. Not only will I strengthen you, I will help you. You're not on your own. I'm not going to just strengthen you and say, do it on your own. I'm going to help you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Psalms 41, verse 13 and 14. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. Who holds your right hand? He holds us by the right hand. It is I who say, fear not. I am the one who helps you. Verse 14. Fear not, you worm of Jacob, you men of Israel. I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Did you hear that? Don't be afraid. God said, I'm going to help. You know, when you look at something and you go, man, there's just no way I can do this. There is no way in the universe I, I, I can accomplish this. God looks at you and says, fear not. Not only will I strengthen you, I am the one who helps you. Isaiah 44, verse 2. Thus says the Lord who made you, who formed you from the womb, and will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. And who formed you and will help you. Psalms 37, verse 17. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Deuteronomy 33, verse 26. Notice, when the righteous cry for help. Now, if you didn't hear the sermon Friday night, you please, I, you know me, I'm not, I'm not claiming to be the greatest preacher in the world, but please go back and hear that sermon on Friday night. I taught you how to pray for God's help. That's all I did was teach you, all right, when you need help, this is how you ask God for help. And it's, it, <laughs> it's a fun study. When the righteous cry for help, sometimes you cry out to God. I taught you Friday night. Sometimes you, you rise early in the morning and cry for help. Sometimes you assemble your family around the table and as a family, you cry out to God for help. And when the righteous cry out for help, and remember, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When the righteous cry out for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Whoa. Deuteronomy 33, verse 26, there is none like God, O Geshurn, who rides through the heavens to your help through the skies in his majesty. The other night I taught you when you're in trouble, rise, O Lord, and come and help me. God rises off of his throne and he rides through the heavens to your help. You say, well, pastor, what does God help us with? Oh my goodness, the list is forever, but let me just give you a few. When you're tempted in sin, Hebrews 2, verse 18, for because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. You're not on your own in the temptation. You're, you're not on your own. He will help you. When your enemies come against you, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 7, when the enemies came against King Uzziah, God helped him against the Philistines. Psalm 60, verse 11, O grant us help against the foe, for vain is the salvation of mankind. 2 Chronicles 32, 8, With him is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. So when your enemies attack, some of you businessmen, you know what I mean. And some of you professionals, you know what I mean. In these days when dog eat dog and swimming with the sharks and people are trying to jockey for position and get others fired to secure their own positions and their own futures, it's amazing what people will do in desperate times. But God is your help. When the haters attack you, Psalms 86 verse 17, show me a sign of favor that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because of you. How many times in my life has God done that for me? Put my haters to shame because all of a sudden people say, it is obvious God is helping him. This is what God does for us, beloved. 
some of you in your offices. Let God help you. And let it be obvious that God is helping you. Don't sit there and try to take all the glory and the credit for it. Let it be obvious that God is helping you. It puts the haters to shame. Psalms 119, verse 86. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. Yeah, people persecute you with lies. They fight you with lies. God will help you. Distress. Psalms 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord to my God. I cried for help. And from his temple, he heard my voice. And my cry reached his ears. Beloved, did you hear that? I don't care whether you're in physical distress. Your marriage is in distress. Your finances are in distress. Your education is in distress. If you are in distress, <laughs> In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. Why do you cry for help? Because my help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Oh, beloved. I'm going to stop there. We'll pick up on this next Saturday and Sunday. Go back and listen to that Friday night sermon on how to pray for help. But beloved, <laughs> He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, some of you, you've never walked through hard times. And you don't know how faithful he is to his promises. I have the incredible privilege and joy of telling you how wonderful he is. He will never fail you. He will never forsake you. He is the God who helps. So get that tattooed on the forefront of your thinking. And all day long, what is the source of my help? Lord, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Oh, my help comes from God, maker of heaven and earth. And just begin to meditate on that. You're not alone. God is going to help you.